All right, boys, today we're gonna take a blast from the past and we're gonna see if Alder Lake can still compete. Now, what gave me the idea for this video? Well, honestly, all the Intel drama. According to Intel and all mainstream tech tubers, 12th gen is not affected by the degradation problem. So the idea is you go and you RMA your 13th gen or your 14th gen CPU, and you go and you pick yourself up a 12900K. And you just go and you sell your 13th or 14th gen CPU on Craigslist or whatever. So we wanna find out if that's actually a viable strategy instead of going and changing platforms to a 7800X3D. Now this video is just for funsies because I know if you watch my channel that you've locked all your cores and you found your voltage sweet spot and you don't need to worry about any of this degradation problem. Huh? Huh? Now there is a little bit of a plot twist here too because when the 12900K came out, actually DDR4 was the fastest for this processor at the time. Fast forward to now and we are actually on third gen Z790 motherboards such as the Lightning. I will leave affiliate links to all these products down below. Now here's the interesting thing. What if we take a 12900K and put it on a third gen Z790 board? Now for this benchmark video, we are gonna take that 12900K that I got on launch day for Alder Lake all those years ago. And the reason why I say this video is for funsies is because those of you that have been following me for a while know that that initial 12900K that I got is a god bin. How much of a god bin, you ask? Well, when I combined it with this motherboard, I got it to 5.5 gigahertz all core at 1.35 volts. And DDR5, 8000, fully stable. Just so there's no funny business, DDR5 8000 on a 12900K validated for almost 27 hours straight. She's 100% stable. The god bin of all god bin 12900Ks. So my launch day 12900K is basically a 13900K. Now let me be clear, if you go and you use the affiliate link and get yourself a 12900K, the odds of you getting a chip that can do what you see in today's video, is basically zero, it's not gonna happen. This video is just for scientific funsies purposes. So that's literally it. Both of these CPUs are going to be direct die cooled. Both of them are gonna have max memory overclocks on them. And then let's go see if old man 12900K has still got it. But before that, this video was brought to you by the supporters of the channel. All hardware on this channel, including all this stuff, was bought with supporter money. They give me money every single month so that I can buy hardware like this and bring unbiased reviews to you guys. So if you enjoy the content and you believe in the vision here at Frame Chasers of a bias-free, corporate sponsorship-free, shill-free, tech review channel, head on over to framechasers.org, become a supporter, get access to the Discord where all information in that Discord is curated to have zero misinformation. And if the whole community vibe isn't really your thing, head on over to framechasers.org slash shop, pick up some products, great way to support the channel and get something in return. Okay, so first up, we're gonna compare Firestrike physics score between these two CPUs. Now, Firestrike physics is gonna give us a rough kind of figure of the maximum theoretical throughput of both of these CPUs. Now, Firestrike physics does factor in IPC, clock speed, memory speed, basically everything. So here, the 12900K is about 12% faster than a 7800X3D in maximum theoretical throughput. Also keep in mind that the E cores are disabled on the 12900K. So both of these CPUs are eight cores and 16 threads. All right, up next is Company of Heroes. Uh, it's the latest one that just came out here. It has a built-in benchmark. Now the 12900K and the 7800X3D, the average FPS between both of these CPUs is pretty much within margin of error, 
but the 1% lows on the Intel CPU are about 6% better, which is pretty standard. The 1% lows and the 0.1% lows are usually going to be better on Intel CPUs once they're tuned. Cyberpunk is up next, and here it's actually the opposite effect where the 7800X3D is about 13% faster than the Intel chip. So I remember that uh, AMD processors were broken on this game for a long time, but it looks like that's been fixed now, so you can actually have an enjoyable experience now. Keep in mind that this was benchmarked in 1080p DLSS off, ray tracing off, all the eye candy turned off, just so that we were CPU bound and not GPU bound. So these results might become a factor once the RTX 5090 comes out or 6090 to where we're more and more CPU bound. Okay, Far Cry 6 is up next. Once again, I had to benchmark this game in 1080p to not be GPU bound, but the 7800X3D is about 18% faster on the averages. And then in the lows, we've got a 7.5% victory for the AMD CPU. So, so far, we've got two W's for Intel and two W's for AMD. Forza Motorsports is up next. Now, when it comes to sim racing games, the AMD 3D chips uh, dominate this genre. But pretty much all sim racing games are going to be all favoring the 3D chips. The AMD CPU is 13% faster on average, but 19% faster in the lows, which is basically an entire CPU generation ahead. Now, I don't know much about sim racing, and maybe if you're playing on like a Neo G9, like a 6K monitor or something, it won't really matter. But this was benchmarked in 1080p so that we were CPU bound, and then this is the theoretical difference. If I was competing in sim racing, I'd get the AMD CPU for sure. Assassin's Creed Mirage is up next, and I would say that these CPUs are more or less tied in this one. They kind of have the classic symptoms where the AMD CPU has 80 FPS more in the max, and then the, uh, the Intel CPU has 20 FPS more in the lows. The Assassin's Creed games are usually insanely GPU bound as well, and this was benchmarked in 1080p, right? So I, if you're gaming at 1440p or 4K with a 4090, then both of these CPUs are going to be exactly the same in this game. The 1% lows, interestingly enough, are 5% faster on the AMD CPU, but it has a lower minimum. Rift Breaker is up next. This game does tend to favor Intel CPUs overall, but even despite that, it's only got about a 7% lead in the 1% lows. So basically, the gaming experience on both of these is going to be identical for the most part. And last but not least, Warzone would not be a benchmark video without our good friend Call of Duty. And then here you can see on both CPUs, the 1% lows are basically identical, but the averages, because of that 3D cache on the AMD CPU, it is a bit higher. The GPU usage on both systems is basically the exact same as well. So the performance here is within margin of error. So I guess the question of can you compete with a 12900K is yes. Yes, you can. Now, one pro here that I wanted to mention is that the AMD system is running 6400 megahertz of RAM with 64 gigabytes of total memory. The advantage of the AMD platform is that it doesn't need max memory speed to perform that well, right? So you can actually run 64 gigs just fine. And I get run over here, and it's incredibly annoying, so the next part of the benchmark is going to be super scattered. So here on the 12900K side, I actually beat the guy in the gulag, and then I jumped back down to this tennis court, where I'm going to try and do a dip test by whipping the mouse around. So when you're actually whipping the mouse around in this tennis court, 
the one percent lows on the amd cpu do go down below a 12900k not too much though not too crazy of a dip but it is still kind of there but the averages are staying higher than the 12900k and then in this green tennis court here there doesn't seem to be any dip at all it is very situational depending on what buildings are around you and what textures are loading as you whip the mouse but the thing is in esport games intel never has that problem so it's just like it's just one of those things man now some could argue that what's the big deal about a 200 fps dip and you would be right it's not really that big of a deal it's just it doesn't happen on a cheaper cpu which is a 12900k so why would you or i should say why would i bother when i know how to tune the system right now the next part here on the amd system is really interesting at the top of the signpost here the longer i whip the mouse the more the cpu temperature goes up and the lower the one percent lows go it's almost like the constant texture load going through the fabric is making the cpu work really hard so the results are pretty much the same as they've always been the summary is if you have no idea what you're doing in a BIOS screen, this bad boy is for you. If you want to compete in esports and you don't mind learning how to faffle in a BIOS screen, Intel is still for you, even dating back to 12th gen. If you're playing single player games, really does not matter because nobody's going to be... I had to benchmark some of those games in 720p just to be CPU bottlenecked. So for the most part, if you're playing a single player game, you're going to be so deeply gpu bound nowadays with these triple a titles you could run a 4790k probably and still be fine and if you're an rts gamer such as starcraft homeworld company of heroes what warhammer whatever you're gonna want to go intel now when it comes to sim racing though it's very interesting so i've probably benchmarked about four racing games now different ones and the amd cpu has always performed significantly better than the intel counterparts in in, in all, all racing games so i actually don't know too much about like the sim racing scene or if those guys actually race each other for money or how that whole kind of scene works but let's say for example it was me and you guys know me i I can't stand AMD platforms. If I was a sim racer though, and I was racing for money, I would rock an AMD CPU. Because the competitive advantage of this CPU in sim racing games is a large enough gap to where I would deal with the bullshit of that platform in order to get that competitive advantage. There's always gonna be a threshold of what you're willing to deal with in order to be able to compete against other people. And sim racing is the only example that I've consistently seen where this platform does make sense. Again, you have to keep in mind, this is in the context of me where I don't need my CPU to perform well out of the box because I know how to tune my system. Anyway, guys, do not hesitate to go out and pick up a 12900K and just chill on this for the next 10 years because honestly, we are so balls deep being GPU bound these days that we, do, we, don't need, we don't need new CPUs for the next decade. There is literally zero goal to new CPU launches because every game is already maxed out. But with that being said, my 9950X is on the way and we will be doing a deep dive on that next week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button because you're not gonna wanna miss that. And we're gonna find out just exactly what that architecture can do and its pros and cons. Anyway, guys, I hope you learned something today. Don't forget to head on over to framechasers.org. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next week for the new CPU review. Talk to you later.